What is up, everybody? Welcome to another Roslyn's opening round three ball or Roslyn's three ball. And in this short form video, I go over some of my opening round bets and week long bets as this is uh, the betting uh, content that I do for the week. And man, I'm on a pretty good run. I got to say uh, it's been helping me uh, at least uh, suffice a couple of bad weeks in DFS. Of course, not making up for it totally. But last week we hit a 70 to 1 top 5, especially, of course, on the 40 to 1 top 10 and top 20 as well. It makes it two straight weeks where we've gotten one of our week-long bets through. First week it was Matthew Wolf coming in second place. And last week it was Chase Seifert coming in fourth place. So a really good start to uh, me and my week-long betting, uh, putting this in the video. So let's see if we can make it three in a row and head in and learn just a little bit about this week's tournament. It is the Memorial. The Memorial is one of the best PGA Tour tournaments. Now I say that PGA Tour because majors are not actually owned by the PGA Tour. So this is one of the best PGA Tour tournaments of the year. It is again played at Muirfield Village. But before we go into Muirfield Village, I wanted to talk about uh, withdrawals in COVID-19. For the second straight week, there are no reported withdrawals due to COVID-19. In fact, the opposite. Most of the players that did test positive are coming back to play. Mirfield Village Golf Club is the host again for the second straight week. It is a par 72 measuring 7,400 yards. It is designed by Jack Nicholas himself, the Golden Bear. Uh, actually, there's more than three of the top 10 in the world that are here to complete. I apologize. Uh, it's more like uh, nine of the world's top 10 and 16 of the world's top 20 are here. 17. The only guys that are missing, Tommy Fleetwood, Ty Hatton, and Adam Scott, who Adam Scott is like non-existent to the world. Uh, no one has heard from him. At least a few people have found uh, Tommy Fleetwood and asked for it. Again, we're playing for a million dollars on DraftKings, a three million dollar prize pool there. And FanDuel, we've got a hundred K to first. All right, so now we're going to go into our player comparison and week long bet here. So after after scouring the, the matchups offered uh, on DraftKings Sportsbook this week, this is the best one that I found. There were a couple of other ones that I was interested in, but we're talking about the number one golfer in the world, Roy McIlroy, with a decent course history here as well, has a couple of top tens, getting plus 110 versus Justin Thomas. Now, Justin Thomas, granted, he looked good last week. I like to normally bet these where I think a guy on the other side has the opportunity to miss the cut. While I don't think Justin Thomas is going to miss the cut here, I just felt like getting plus money on Rory McIlroy, if we had gotten that over the last year, there I don't think there was two times where Justin Thomas, maybe twice that Thomas ended up beating Rory on that plus number. So I just felt like it was really good value. Too hard for me to pass up this week. Again, I'm not looking specifically for Thomas to miss the cut as I do normally when I look for these matchups. Uh, I just didn't want to pass up the plus money on Rory. 10-7 for Rory on DraftKings, 10-9 on uh, for Justin Thomas, 11-8 on FanDuel, 11-9 for Justin Thomas. Their recent form, 11th at the Travelers versus 2nd at the Workday, 40th at the RBC for Rory, missed cut at the Travelers for Thomas. The model that I make has Rory ranked number one and Justin Thomas ranked number three. All right, so my group bet last week was a loss. Uh, I tried to go with Matt Wolf again, but Billy Horschel had a great week. He did beat some of the other guys on that list, but Billy Horschel ended up having a good week. This week, they only offered five groups, and they were all way too close to call. With this strong of a field, they just basically put like the best 25 players and put them up against each other. Um, so I really didn't find any odds, and I, I want to be disciplined, of course, with our uh, with our role that we've made up over the last couple of weeks. So all this other stuff you see is just from the previous guys from last week. So we will pick this back up next week. Uh, I'm not actually sure what the tournament is. i got to go look it up because the, the schedule has totally changed. I know we're not at the... Uh, the PGA Championship quite yet. Might be in the FedEx St. Jude out in Memphis, but uh, I will check that next uh, for next week. Okay, week-long bets, though. This is where, man, what a great week we had last week. Like I said, I don't like to tap myself on the shoulder, but we hit Chase Cypher. He paid the top 20, the top 10, and the top 5. The top 5 stretched out to 70 to 1. Top 10 was something like 40 to 1. The top 20 uh, was something like 14 to 1. So a great payout there. And we nailed Sam Burns on the top 20 at 10 to 1. And he started the week, I'm sorry, he started Sunday in the top five. So we almost had a 
big time week, but still a 70 to one. What a great week. Definitely covers our bets for quite a while. This week, we're going to go right back to some of these longer plays. Andrew Putnam is the first guy I'm going to talk about. He had really been struggling, but finally found a cut last weekend. Was actually playing much better the first couple of rounds. The putter looked good. He was gaining off the tee, which is the most important for him as he really struggles there. So if we can get another good week where he hits a lot of fairways, his putter in his around the green game is very, very good. So uh, I think this... Again, the top 20 odds here are a little short because there aren't as many people. Also, there aren't, aren't as many golfers as last week. Also, there's a much stronger field. So it's actually the top 20 bets are harder, but the top 10, top 5, and win bets are actually much larger. So if we can, of course, get somebody into the top 5 this week, um, I believe that we will be set up for a pretty good payout. Andrew Putnam, like I said, his top 20 is 12 to 1. His top 10 is 33 to 1. His top 5 is 90 to 1. And his win is 600 to 1. Jeez Louise, crazy. Uh, Adam Long is my second guy. He had a pretty good week last week. Didn't end up coming through, uh, but I think that with a stronger field this week and good uh, motivation from last, 14 to 1 on the top 20, which is weird. Um, 14 to 1 on the top 20, 18 to 1 on the top 10, 50 to 1 on the top 5, and 250 to one to win and the last one which is going to be a theme of these next three bets i'm going in on brendan Steele this week he is ball striking was really good last week he just couldn't find the putter so i'm hoping that maybe the fast greens that they expect to have here this week and play a, a little bit harder will bring the field more towards him maybe not in maybe not make his putting better but make everybody else's putting worse so in fact that should bring up his strokes gained uh, putting a stat and if that's the case i like him at 10 to 1 for the top 20 16 to 1 for the top 10 45 to 1 for the top 5 and 250 to 1 to win again we've got the strongest field possibly ever for a pga tour tournament so this one does make it a little bit harder to get these guys into the top 20 if you're looking for a little bit better odds check out the top 30 and top 40 i think the top t uh, 30 odds for brendan Steele were three and a half Adam Long, they were five, and Putnam, they were seven. So that's maybe something if, if you really think that the field is that strong and is really going to impact these guys, which it definitely could, take a look at the top 30 odds as well. All right, now we're going to get into the round one bets and showdown focus because golf sweats are just the best, so why not start the fun right away? And, of course, this is our, our last uh, subject here. So I'm going to start with Brendan Steele again. He's getting plus 130 versus Scotty Scheffler. Scotty Scheffler has played terribly since coming back out, whereas Brendan Steele has actually looked quite impressive. So I'm not really sure why Brendan Steele's getting plus money here. Maybe it's just because DraftKings knows I like him this week and they want to sucker me in. Uh, but in any case, it looks like really good value. Scotty Scheffler has been good off the tee, but he hasn't really been good anywhere else. So I'm hoping Steele uh, playing against him uh, will be able to oust him. And then the next one is a total throw up in the air because neither of these guys, we haven't seen them in, the, in quite a while. They're both European tour guys. It's Bern Wiesberger getting plus 100 versus Hao Tong Lee. And the reason why I picked this one, picked Wiesberger here, as you can see with my plus, I always put uh, the odds on next to the guy that I'm playing. The reason why I picked Wiesberger is because he's much more controlled off the tee than Hao Tong Lee is. Hao Tong Lee is one of his biggest downfalls is his off the tee game. And we know how important that's going to be this week with the uh, notes and uh, theories and memos passed to the players that it's going to play almost similar to a, a, a U.S. Open with how long the rough is going to be. That should really affect Hao Tong Lee, whereas I, I hope Wiesberger can find a bunch of more fairways in the first round. Uh, so I've got Vriesberger plus 100 over Hao Tong Lee, and you're getting a plus 360 parlay if you hit both of Steele and Vriesberger. All right, we're going to move on to round one showdown focus as we've got uh, 20,000 to first place on DraftKings for round one. Colin Morikawa at 9,500, a $500 cheaper uh, price tag for him for round one. I like him to try and carry over, oopsies, carry over. Uh, that uh, good momentum from the win last week into at least round one. I don't know about the whole week, but at least round one, 9,500 for him. And Brendan Steele, 6,800. Might as well just keep with him and see if I can at least hit the round one payout. And to top it off, we're going to go Brendan Steele plus 200 versus Wallace and Scheffler. So really what I'm worrying about there is Matt Wallace. Uh, so I will take Brendan Steele plus 200 versus Matt Wallace because I already think he's going to beat Scotty Scheffler. Um, so I'm doubling up there. 
My second three ball uh, in my last uh, bet for this week is Keegan Bradley plus 175 versus Danny Willett and Max Homa. Danny Willett had a fantastic start, a really a fantastic Sunday at the Rocket Mortgage uh, that propelled him into the top 10. Uh, but I think maybe that was just a really good round. Uh, I'm not ready to go in and say that he's going to beat Keegan Bradley on a consistent basis, uh, round over round. And Max Homa just hasn't really gotten it going. Keegan Bradley also led the field in uh, strokes game ball striking last week, or it was one of the top in that category and one of the top on his approaches. So if he can get his putter going, or if the harder greens and faster greens can help him, then I think that he could end up being a really good play uh, not just in round one, but maybe for the week as well. And I like the plus 175 that we are getting. So that does it for uh, my bets for round one. Again, this is a short uh, form video where I give you a couple of uh, round one bets and a couple of week long bets. And we've done pretty good. So let's keep up the good, uh, good work here and see if we can get three in a row. So until next time, everybody, thank you for coming and joining my video here. And uh, if you, of course, like it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find it. And of course, give me a couple of likes on the video. So until next time, uh, the Live Before Lock Show, 8.30 tonight, Ben Raz and I, come check it out. And until then, everybody, we'll see you on the other side. Cheers.